And so the ball dropped, and now here we are in 2023. Happy New Year, Mycophiles. I hope you guys had a great New Year. Uh, I know I had a pretty good one, ate some good food. And uh, so I'm really, really ready to get into 2023. There's going to be lots and lots of cool things happening. First of all, in January, I'm going to start the contests on Discord, right? About, you know, the Myco Olympics, I guess you could call it. We're just going to start out with the cultivation picture of the day, sort of like they have on the Esmeri. So basically, I'm still sort of planning on how best to do it. But basically, the prize for the first month is going to be a whole liquid culture set. All right, so if you're interested in getting into liquid culture or bolstering your collection of liquid culture items, this is the right contest for you. And also, it's just plain old fun. So the people will vote in the Discord who's going to have, who's going to basically win at the end of the month. Uh, I'm thinking right now we're going to have like a heart, you know, reaction sign, and I'm going to count whichever picture has the most heart reaction signs will win. But, uh, you know, I'm still considering the ins and outs because it's, it's kind of difficult. I, I, I still haven't set up on a system and there's flaws to that system as well. Uh, one of which being that, you know, later videos will have m more of a disadvantage than the videos that are posted earlier on. So, you know, things like that. And also like there's going to be lots of comments there as well that I'm going to have to delete because I just want to keep the photos there. So um, I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. If you guys are more familiar with Discord, Discord and know of a good system that, that I could be, that I'm looking for, a perfect system for this kind of thing, then please let me know in the comments below or send me a message on Discord. So guys, basically after I made this video, I was like, oh wait, how about I just open up the channel in let's say like the three days before the end of the month and then everybody could post their pictures at that point. So that's what I'm thinking right now. Uh, okay, so moving on, I'm going to tell you guys about two experiments that I am planning on doing. Uh, one of which is to do with the poo lovers, and the other is to do with these grain jars that have been a disappointment. Uh, the flash prep grain jars, which I believe are just too dry, so they're taking forever. If you guys remember, I've talked about it ad nauseum on the live streams. So what I'm going to do is I sterilize some, some water in the syringe, and also I sterilize some water in this jar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Basically, I'm thinking I'm going to put about five uh, milliliters in each each of the jars just to start out with, you know, in the sab and hope and then I'm going to shake them up to disperse the water and hopefully it'll be enough for it to kickstart colonization and so that I could get to using these jars again. And, you know, I was really it really sucks because I was really excited. I put some good genetics in here and they're just like not going anywhere. So that's the first thing that I'm going to be doing today. Uh, and also, secondly, the second experiment is to do with the poo lovers. And as you can see, it says 10 p.m. here. There's some grain soaking in here. There's some rye berries. And why am I soaking some rye berries? Well, it's actually not a full cup of rye berries like you would use in a quart. It's actually a quarter of a cup in dry rye berries. So it's basically a quarter of a quart. It's about that much. But I'm going to split it between two jars. And why so little, Sage? Well, because I am going to do a shortcut well, it's not really a shortcut, but it's just uh, sort of a way to get about the the issues with uh, pasteurization that I've been having with the poo that I have, the compost. And there's also another experiment coming up with that, but I'm just going to start off with this. I'll get into the other experiment in a second. But so, okay, the problem is it always contends, right? Always gets trike, even with pasteurization. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just mix this jar up with poo and a little bit of grains. And and then I'm gonna spawn it once it's fully colonized. And what does this do? Well, it takes away the whole open air problem and thus that means that there's no need to pasteurize. I could go full on balls to the wall sterilization for both of them. And okay, so that's great Sage, but when, why are you putting so little, uh, so little grains? Well, because two reasons. Uh, first of all, is because I need, I want some space for the poo. I want, I want more poo, right? Because poo is important because they'll fruit without grains, but they do need some poo generally, generally to be healthy and to have a better chance of everything going well. It's, you need poo really. That's why they're poo lovers. Whereas the other reason is that, well, they really don't need all that much grains. Grains are just fully packed in nutrition. It's, it's unnatural how much nutrition we give into a small shoebox or into a monotub, uh, you know, with our home type of growing. Uh, they will never experience that kind of nutrition in nature. And, and the pros of that is that we get good yield. We get a lot of flushes, right? That kind of thing. But the downside of that, well, there are downsides to it, you know? Uh, one of which, too much nutrition is not necessarily always a good thing. It could be that 
basically you could have you know lots of mutations you could have blobs uh, you could have weird fruiting basically or if you have some kind of it, it increases your chances of contaminants as well to a certain extent especially if you have like bacterial spawn for example you actually want to use a little less spawn or you want to use a little you, you want to use more substrate basically and the reason for that is because you you have more points of potential contaminants to take hold because it's so nutritious that all sorts of things want it. So that's that's the big issue with too much. And also it's it's not necessary. For example, the the uh, kits that they sell in certain European countries for the pool lovers and also core lovers for that matter, they don't use any grains at all, right? It's basically colonized mycelium in a tray. It's just poo. It's just like horse manure, that's it. And then, and then the, you get like a little packet of a casing mix that's been pasteurized and then you just put it on there and then just uh, fruit them like that so uh, i'm gonna go with just mostly poo another example is for example uh the baba yaga who is fruiting poo lovers in monotubs he he uses only like one quart of spawn per monotub and most of it is just nutritious substrate so uh you know it's it's kind of overkill the amount of of uh, grains that we use. So I'm just gonna go lower, less risk of contamination, doesn't really need it. And I just wanna get some healthy flushes and poo will be plenty for that. So once these are these guys are fully colonized, I'm thinking I'm gonna spawn them to a shoe box and I'm gonna mix it up with a little bit of core and then just go from there. So that's the experiment. Now I told you guys there's another experiment I'm gonna do with the poo and that is actually a pasteurization experiment because in a recent live stream, if you guys were there, you remember that uh, somebody said that if you actually put the instant pots, keep warm setting on, that setting actually maintains the perfect pasteurization temperature. And what does that mean? That means that I can actually do overnight pasteurization with my instant pot, which is something that I've been meaning to want, meaning to do for a long time, but I just couldn't because I, because I, you know, I was like, oh, I need to get a sous vide, uh, however you pronounce it, you know, a, a proper slow cooker, basically a dedicated slow cooker with with a temperature control that can maintain certain temperature, right? And not all slow cookers have that, and I just don't want more stuff, right? I'm getting another, I'm getting a pressure cooker now. I got an instant pot that's got like a slow cooker setting, right? So I don't want to get like a slow cooker with a temperature thing and I might get a Martha in, in a few weeks to months. So it's like, you know, lots of stuff and I don't like to have lots of stuff really. So that's, uh, that was awesome. So I'm going to be trying that out. You know, I thought about it myself, but I, I figured, oh, there's no way. Cause, cause it's weird, right? Cause, because basically the keep warm setting is just like barely lower than like the slow cooker setting on the instant pot so i was like oh it's probably going to be way lower that's what i thought you know but it turns out that it's actually just a little bit lower than than the uh, slow cooker setting on the instant pot so that is awesome news so i'm going to be trying that out and pasteurizing it for just overnight i said i might have said 24 hours earlier overnight is what i mean i'm going to do overnight uh pasteurization so that's sort of what's going on guys and uh yeah that's pretty much uh all there is to say really so I hope you guys are having a good time. And again, check out the Discord, guys. There's a competition there, right? You wanna you wanna win or you wanna be a part of the Myco Olympics, <laughs> then then head on over. And obviously this is not like a like a you know, give me a subscribe or do this or whatever or whatever, or whatever, right? Um But you know, do as your heart tells you is all I can tell you. <laughs> Alright guys, Michael File Sage, checking out. Have a great day or night, guys. Bye bye.